Hi, I've always been one to think about thinking. I don't have any formal education in it. I didn't even know that a person could seek out information on the subject of thinking until I met Conference Report. I don't even know I ended up sub to his channel. I guess I'm in a lucky position in a way because I have brain injuries and I have post-traumatic stress. So I have learned that I need to check in with myself about my thinking and my perceptions of reality. Not that I'm particularly delusional, but I have a very strong flight or fight response as a result of trauma and it's easily triggered. And I have to be very careful, although the emotional sensations are extremely strong to be reactive, I have to be very careful to somehow kick in the more rational part of myself and analyze the moment and if I'm not capable of even doing that because it's so emotional I have to discipline myself to at least not immediately react to it because my immediate reactions are going to be visceral and very animal and often destructive either to myself to the situation or to something that I hold dear. So I've been thinking a lot about thinking for most of my life, it just in order to be able to discipline my own. I've run across a few things, but a lot of it's philosophy and a lot of it's woo. And a lot of it just sounds like spinning little just so tales in your head to soothe or to contain or to create an answer to stuff that you really don't even understand the question to, like why we're here. How do we perceive things? What is consciousness? Junk like that. Day of the Pasta posted a little cartoon today. At first I didn't understand it. I had to look through it three times before I finally got it. It's an argument that once a house is disassembled, the house is just gone. That all that's left is the pieces of the house. And I started thinking about it the other way around, which is that no, it never was a house. It was always pieces assembled in a particular manner that we have called a house, designated a house, simply because of the configuration of the components. And that's what we do with humans. I'm not talking about objectifying humans. It's pants. It's, it's just pants. By race or gender or stuff like that. I'm saying that we call a human a human when really what a human is is a huge assembly of component pieces. There is no human there except in the assembly of the pieces. And when the pieces disassemble, the human is gone when they disassemble to a certain degree. And that got me thinking about my concept of I, as in I, me, mine, and it got me thinking about what a collective assembly a human body really is when you consider all the little microscopic cooties that live in a human being without which we couldn't function, how we really are a colony of cells that have specialized. Actually, we're, we're a collective of colonies of cells that have specialized and how there is nothing intrinsically human about being human it's just that all the constituent parts put together in a particular assembly we call human and how our thinking influences our perceptions of reality because the words we put to things are how we think different cultures have different words for things or different ways to assemble words into thought processes and that's why we fight with each other so much because we don't understand how other people think nor I don't think can we ever be even if we immerse ourselves in the culture we can get a lot closer to understanding how other people think but I'm not sure that we can ever really understand another culture thoroughly if we're not immersed in it from birth and that's true of individual humans I can't understand you because I'm not you it's a cliche walk a mile in my shoes but it's from birth, walk a lifetime in my shoes. And our fear and intolerance of other people's differences from us maybe says more about us than it does about them. 
about us as a species and our fear of the other as a threat. So our perception of reality is that each human body is an individual, is a me, is an I. And the real wonder about all that is how did it end up being like that? Why don't I refer to myself as we if I'm a colony and a collective? Why do I perceive myself as an individual separate from other individuals? I often wonder if animals perceive themselves that way. I rather think that they do, the higher evolved mammals at least. Maybe the concept of I comes from we have to keep this body from dying right now because it's under imminent threat. This body is hungry right now. Maybe that's where the sense of I comes from, from really, 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 really primitive thought processes, possibly pre-verbal, pre-language thought processes. There's a joke. The brain and the heart get into an argument. The brain says, I do all the thinking and I figure stuff out and so without me the body would die and the heart says you know I pump blood to every part of the body including you and without me the body would die and the asshole is just sitting in the corner snickering and the two of them turn around angry and say what are you laughing at the asshole says well obviously I'm the most important and the brain and the heart just laugh at him and say oh yeah uh-huh yeah you're so important so the asshole closes shut for about a week and the brain is in agony and the heart is working too hard and you get it so i've always been the asshole kind of off topic but whatever so uh, thinking about thinking i'm getting to do it a lot in a lot more organized and disciplined way now thanks to conference reports so i guess this is kind of a shout out to him he does a lot of walk and talks and he does a lot of pondering at his kitchen wall, which is just gorgeous. He also does a lot of thought experiments by manipulating objects. He does a lot of visual stuff. He does a lot of manipulation of small objects as models and so on to represent thought constructs. He's writing a novel about what would happen if we lived in an antinatalist world. If you get a chance and you want to do some thinking about thinking, I really recommend him. He's not the only one, of course. He's just the one that I like because he's mild-mannered and funny and creative and a little devilish and thought-provoking. So that was some thinking about thinking. When the house is gone, the house never really was. It was just an assembly of component pieces that we designate a house. So that's one of the limitations of language. That's all. Bye.